guys so I'm back again here with a haul I know I haven't done one in a while so I'm gonna try something new this time I don't know how it's gonna work out but it's gonna be a combination of stuff I'm gonna hurry and show you the books and then I'm gonna go back and talk about them a little bit so uh, if you guys just want to see the books you could just watch it and then click off and if you want to hear about them stay tuned so I've got some fun books my friend Jen over at reading with pug sent me a uh, random act of kindness I had no idea what she was sending me she sent me The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. This is Daniel Radcliffe's new movie that's coming out pretty soon, if it's not already out. And I really want to go see it, but I wanted to read it first. And it's barely 200 pages, so it's going to be a quick read. Looking forward to that. I picked up Blood Grows by Andrea Kremer. I have already been spoiled about what happens in this book. Not intentionally. Somebody updated their status on the main page of Goodreads with the ending. Thanks. But... So I don't know when I'm going to get to that. It was one of my most anticipated books, but now I know what happens. I won a copy of Unleashed by Nancy Holder and Debbie Vigue. Very excited to get to this. Um, yeah, I don't think that's signed, though. No. I won a copy of V.C. Andrews' Cloudburst. This is one of her new series, but I don't have the first book yet, so I actually need to go find that. Um, I did get a copy of The Fault in Our Stars. I have a green signature, but uh, no extras, but that's okay. This one I intend on reading by the end of the month. And then I picked up A Million Sons by Beth Revis, which I'm also very, very excited about. And I hope to get to this one by the end of January as well. I got a book closeouts order. I got Folly by Martha Jocelyn. The Calligrapher's Daughter by Eugenia Kim. Our Lady of Darkness by Fritz Lieber. Blood and Flowers by Penny Bluebaugh. Mercy by Rebecca Lim. Half Light by Shelley Jackson. The Girl in the Garden by Camilla Nair. And The Ivy by Lauren Koontz and Rena Oliver. Rena Oner. Sorry about that. Okay, so that's all the books I got and... Thanks for stopping by, and if you want to hear about them, here we go. So I'll just start with the Ivy. This is about a girl starting Harvard, and uh, just, you know, the story of a freshman beginning her new year with three roommates. It sounds like a really light so, read. I don't know when I'm going to get to this, but I thought it sounded cute. When I've already read The Girl in the Garden. I thought it was a really fantastic family, uh, you know, a lot of family secrets going on. You she know, was, I just, I really liked it. I really liked how it was put together, so I wanted a copy of this one. If you guys want to check out my review on Goodreads, that's already been up for, I reviewed it last year. This one, Half Light by Shelley Jackson. It's about uh, conjoined twins, and one of them is uh, trying to, you know, she's just more of an independent spirit, and she has a lot of energy, and she just doesn't want to be tied to her sister who has kind of given up, and she's depressing and boring and doesn't ha want to do anything. So, uh she tries to kill her sister so it's gonna be uh, interesting. mercy by rebecca Lim. i actually didn't read up on this one i think it's a angel story mercy wakes up on a school bus bound for paradise a small town where everyone knows everyone else's business or thinks they do but mercy has a secret life she's an angel doomed to return repeatedly to earth taking on a new human form each time she does in an effort to resolve a cataclysmic rift between heavenly beings. In Paradise, Mercy meets Ryan, an 18-year-old whose sister was kidnapped two years ago and is presumed dead. When another girl is also taken, Mercy knows she has to act quickly and use an extraordinary powers to rescue her, even if it means exposing her true identity. And then I got Blood and Flowers by Penny Bluebaugh. This is about a girl who's run away from home. I, her mother's like a drug addict. And she ends up joining a circus troupe or a theater troupe. Theater troupe. Uh, puppeteers and stuff. They travel around. Tra puppeteers and a uh, actors. So Persia, uh, the girl here joins the troop and then danger happens and they end up running to the fairy world but then find even more scarier things in the fairy world so that's going to be interesting as well i've got another adult book this is our lady of darkness by fritz lieber 
Uh, this is a story about a man who writes horror fantasy for a living. And one day he's looking kind of down on his apartment from a, a building next door. And he sees a pale brown thing lean out his window and wave. So this kind of sets him on a quest through ancient books and modern streets to try to answer some of his questions. It's called a modern urban fantasy story. So uh, that's going to be interesting. It's really short, so I can't wait to read that. Uh, this one is The Calligrapher's Daughter by Eugenia Kim. Uh, this takes place in the 20th century Korea. She's a privileged daughter of a calligrapher, but her family starts... Uh, uh, breaking apart under Japan's harsh occupation. Uh, she becomes a companion to a young princess until Korea's last king is assass assassinated. Then she is uh, decides to pursue uh, education and surprised that she finds love. She ends up getting married, but then she's denied a passport and her husband leaves her. So, uh, well, leaves to America without her. So it sounds like an interesting story. I really love Asian culture, especially Korea. And I, I don't know, sometimes these family stories or uh, culture stories, I, I really enjoy them. So I can't wait to read that. And then my last book closeout book was Folly by Martha Jocelyn. And I don't actually know very much about this one. This looks like a ho historical novel. It takes place in the 19th century England. A teenage girl, Mary Finn, relates the unhappy conclusion to her experiences as a young servant in an aristocratic London household. While years later, young James Nelligan describes how he can leave his beloved foster family to live and be educated in London's famous family hospital. So it may take two different perspectives, both Mary and James in different lives and settings during that e the century. So, I, I, I mostly bought it for the cover, I won't lie. It just looks like her skin is kind of made out of stone and it's cracking. And so, I, I, I picked it up for the cover, guys. Okay, so I won this book, Cloud Burst by V.C. Andrews, but it's the second book in a series and I haven't purchased the first yet, so I don't want to read the back because I don't want to be spoiled. So, uh, if you guys like V.C. Andrews, you should check out. And, of course, I got The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I've heard a lot of things about this. Um, I also don't I don't want to read the blurb. <laughs> um, and I really hope to be able to read this soon. Oh, I've been hearing some wonderful things about it, so I can't wait to read that. A Million Sons by Beth Revis. This one is also second in a series, so I'm not going to read the blurb to you. But I am very excited to read it. This one does not have any fancy cover on the inside, and it's just gray and blue on the outside. It does still have Godspeed in the cover there. I don't know if you can see that with my little camera. The book I won, Unleashed, uh, Wolf Springs Chronicles by Nancy Holder and De Debbie Vigue. This says, Caitlin McBride's life changed in an instant when her mother died. Uprooted from her California home, Caitlin has, was shipped to the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, to her only living relative, her grandfather. And now she has to start over in Wolf Springs, a tiny village in the Ozark Mountains. Like any small town, Wolf Springs has secrets, but the secrets hidden here are more sinister than Caitlin would ever imagine. It's a town with a history that reaches back centuries, spans continents, and conceals terrifying truths. And Caitlin McBride is about to change everything. Broken families, ageless grudges, forced alliances, and love that blooms in the darkest night. Welcome to Wolf Springs. And I am pretty sure it has werewolves in it. So, And then, of course... Blood Rose, this is the third and final book in this series, so I'm not going to spoil it for you guys at all by reading any part of it at all. But I am very, very excited to read this. And it's read inside. So, see how that story ends. And then this one's coming out in, uh, as a movie. It's The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. Arthur Kipps is an up-and-coming London solicitor who has sent his synth in Gifford, a faraway town in the windswept salt marshes beyond Nine Lives Causeway, to attend the funeral and settle the affairs of a client, Mrs. Alice Drablow of Eel Marsh House. Mrs. Drablow's house stands at the end of the causeway, wreathed in fog and mystery, but Kipps is unaware of the tragic secrets that lie hidden behind the sheltered windows. The routine business trip he anticipated quickly turns into a whole quickly takes a horrifying turn 
when he finds himself haunted by a series of mysterious sounds and images. A rocking chair in a deserted nursery, the eerie sound of a pony trap, of a pony and a child scream in the fog, and most terrifying of all, a ghostly woman dressed in black. So thank you very much, Jen. I can't wait to read this. I'm definitely going to read it before I see the movie, and it's less than 200 pages, so it's going to be quick. I am anticipating a scary read here. So that's all I have to show you this week, guys. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you soon. Bye!